Hello again and welcome to the SUTV show. Well, one game down and now the small matter of a trip to Nottingham Forest as Paul Heckingbottom takes his side to the city ground for the first time since our playoff showdown last year. Coming up on today's show, we reflect on the game against Crystal Palace, look ahead to Friday's showdown against Nottingham Forest and also look back on what's been a very busy week generally for the Blades. All in the company of the former Sheffield United striker, Carla Sarba. So it has been a very busy week off the field. And Carl, first place to start, Tom Davis is a blade. What do you make of that side? Yeah, really good news. Uh, free transfer, uh, 25 years of age, and he's played over 150 times in the Premier League. Wonderful. You said it there, a lot of Premier League experience. How important is that for you? Yeah, in this team that we have, we've got some Premier League experience. We've had a lot of new players coming in. We've got young players stepping up. To have a young lad who's played there and has you know, featured for over three seasons, four seasons in the Premier League, it's invaluable. Now, he's still very young, but he does seem like he's been around for a long time. Yeah, and the, the good thing is that he is young with our coaching staff and the way they're bringing these young top players through, the Gibbs White, Tommy Doyle, McAtee, you know, they'll have high, high hopes for him. He's not at his level and he's just going to continue. They'll be hoping to really improve him. So really, really exciting signing. So this midfield, it's starting to come together now. Suze has come in, uh, Gustavo Harmer's coming from Coventry and now Tom Davis. It's starting to look a lot more like it, isn't it? Oh, yeah, there, there's real steel there a lot of work rate and it complements you know we've don't forget we have still got good players that are already at the club so you know it's it's adding to and it's building and it's going to really create a, a competitive environment how do you see all this knitting together now with like say the likes of Ollie Nord and others that are already at the club well, it, it's going to drive everyone on you know you've got people who are going to be wanting to step up there and match prefer levels of Tom and he's going to be wanting to push on um, Gus, Gus is going to, you know, he's going to, the, the reviews about him, we've seen him for the last two or three years. He's been a really exciting player. Uh, and um, Vinny's going to be really, really a powerhouse. You know, we've seen so much footage of him. We saw a cameo against Crystal Palace and it takes a while for the players, the players to bed in and get up to speed and learn the ways of the club and how the manager wants them to play. But I do think in a, a month or two, we're going to be a really, really strong proposition. Now, Tom's been doing all his social media work and all these photographs as well which takes me to the question of Carl when you signed for Sheffield United what was it like was it just done little black the and office? white pictures weren't they <laughs> uh, no it was uh, I was in the office with uh, Derek Dooley really special memories um, and it's a wonderful time you know I, I'm really happy for the lad he's you know he, he's a free transfer so he will have been anxious it's not nice when you're out of contract but obviously he, he's he's found a great club in Sheffield United and hopefully we found a really exciting prospect ourselves. And we caught up with Tom a little earlier and he said he's delighted to be a Blade. And imagine you can't wait to get started now into training tomorrow and there's a case of building yourself up and being ready as soon as possible. Um, yeah, definitely, like you said. I think for me it's just um, pre-season's been different for me this year, but um, I feel good, I feel fit. So it's just getting in with the lads, getting used to being around a team and and getting that side of my game going again and I'm sure I'll be as I'll, I'll be ready for whenever I'm needed you. Yeah. And some familiar faces in the Sheffield United dressing room Ian Bruce will be someone you know well from your England days. Yeah, yeah, going well with Ryan and uh, he's a great lad so I'm looking forward to seeing him. I haven't got to, to see him yet but yeah, I'm excited, I'm excited to meet the group and, and become a part of it, yeah. And you've passed your first major test because uh, we've had the signing video, only one canvas in the locker, <laughs> quarter past ten now, so not enough time to get another one and you've passed with flying colours, so well done on that. Yeah, well it's my first win here, so <laughs> let's hope we can go a lot more in here. Last weekend, Sheffield United experienced Premier League football once again as the Blades hosted Crystal Palace. Carl, before we get on to the game, let's talk about the atmosphere because it was quite spine tingling at the start. Gustavo Harmer came out, got a great reception from the cop. Then, of course, the greasy chip butty song. That was extra special as yeah, well. Yeah, it was, you know, I recorded it. I've seen it many times. It was a really special uh, 
rendition of it. Um, and it does, it gives you goosebumps. And this is what this place is going to be like this season. It's going to be full of atmosphere. We, we missed out last time with COVID and that cost the team dear. We can now see how important the fans are going to be and they're playing their part. Generally, your thoughts on Sheffield United's performance? Uh, I, was, I was buoyed by it. You know, I know we lost and the stats didn't look great and all the pundits who didn't watch the game had their opinion. I was really, I was really impressed. The determination, the, the real grit. I've seen this team for the last two seasons where they pass and they're so, you know, technical and gifted. They really rolled their sleeves up. They're up against an experienced, exciting Palace team and they went toe to toe. You know, they were knocking the ball in the you, you know, you've got Oliver Norwood who can knock the ball through the eye of a needle. He's just putting it into the channels to, to help us just turn them and, and battle. And I was really, really impressed. You know, the two young boys up top, Will could have scored two. I thought he was brilliant. He worked his socks off. Um, ben Osborne in midfield, so tonight he was tackling like Robbo. Um, I, I was really, really happy. I was, I, I felt a little sorry for the lads and the manager because obviously in four or five weeks time when we're at full strength, you would have believed that a team would have gone on and got three points. But the boys that were out there acquitted themselves well um, and they did the fans proud. You know, it's not often you, you lose and you see the praise coming from the from the fans, the determination and the effort. Um, and I think it will have given them all heart as well. No one was giving us a, you know, they're talking 4 0, 5 0, we're going to get. It was a 1 0, unlucky, unfortunate loss. Um, and I think it will be okay. You know, we can, we can match these, we can work harder, we can train harder, listen to the manager and the coaches and, and see how far we can get. You mentioned the strikers and, of course, two 20-year-olds in Bene Traore and Will Asula making their Premier League debuts. I mean, that's some effort, isn't it, really, in front of a full house as well? Full house. And, you know, they didn't play shackled, did they? You had Will shooting with his left foot in the first half. So unlucky. His shot in the second half, the right foot, where he really it was behind him and he dug round. Brilliant effort, and, and Benny on his, you know, his, his Premiership debut, his home debut, um, competitive debut for Blades at a pact. He wasn't overawed. You know, we saw glimpses of what we got to see from him, and he's, he's what two weeks into his stay. Give him for a couple of months where he beds in. He knows the the relationships with players. You know, it, it's all positive, and and it's only going to get better each game now. And got through 82 minutes, particularly impressive. We obviously had to wait to get him in the door because of the visa issues. So he's not trained too much with Sheffield United. So of to course. get through 22 minutes was some effort too. Yeah, massive. You know, and it's very draining the transfer process. And you know, I, I couldn't even imagine the moving countries. It's really draining, and he acquitted himself well. A word for Wes Fordingham. I know you're a big fan of Wes, but some really good saves in that game. Outstanding. You know, I've watched. Uh, not one who likes to compliment goalkeepers. <laughs> But the, the headed save that he did, it was just brilliant. And his, his all-round play, you know, his, his distribution was great. His claiming the ball was great. And I'm just, you know, I'm proud of the way he's, he's gone. You know, he, he's took last season. He was brilliant, made massive saves. And he's come back and he's raring to go. And I hope he, he gets all the acclaim that he deserves. Now, looking ahead then to Nottingham Forest on Friday night, um, not too long ago that we were at the city ground and that will bring back memories of that playoff showdown against Forest, which uh, certainly lives long in the memory, doesn't it? Yeah, they, they, they're always good, good matches against Forest. The, the rivalry is intense. Um, commentating from there is intense. It gets quite hectic even in the commentary booth. Obviously, there were some dark scenes that we saw that night, which was a shame, but the game was brilliant. You know, one of our best performances... Um, and it was just an unfortunate night, but um, I'm excited to see see how we can do against them. They've gone on really well, you know, and I know we were probably all wanting them to come straight back down, but they excelled. You had Gibbs White, our, our former, you know, favourite, gone on and being brilliant. So the boys want to acquit themselves against these boys. They, they want to show Gibbs White that, look, we, we've joined you. We're a year later, but we've joined you, and this is what we're about. So it's going to be a really tough match, a tough atmosphere. I think our players and management will be relishing it. And a lot of the players still with Forrest and Sheffield United. One player who's not is Billy Sharp. And I have to mention Billy now because we've just heard he's gone to LA Galaxy. Yeah. And some move there. I'm sure you wouldn't have turned that down in your career. Oh, not would you? at all. Even a holiday there I would have been happy with. So, no, he deserves it. You know, the condition, the way, the way he's worked on his body, he, he's aged, but he's aged in such a way that he keeps himself sharp. And, you know, he's going to score a load of goals over there and they're going to adore him as well. So, no, just so happy for him. Looking down back over the years, I mean, this game is not 
one that really needs any extra billion, is it? It's been a good rally with Nottingham Forest over a long period of time, going back to your playing days and before as well. Yeah, what well, you say, and before as well. You know, I'm not from the <laughs> 20s, come on. Um, yeah, no, we, our matches were always tough. I remember Jagielka made, I think it was his, his debut right back, and, and he was on the coach on the way home, absolutely shattered. They were always tough matches they have good players they have a lot of energy and their fans demand a lot of them so you're not going to turn up to the city ground and face a flat forest so um yeah the boys will be up for it and they have to be up for it because it's it's an intense match and our fans will be traveling into a hostile environment they're going to be vocal and they're going to they're going to want the the proper sheffield united performance of hard work and determination that was your cue, by the way, to mention your goal. So I, give I you don't an, like I give to. you another opportunity no, to talk no, about I may it. Tell us scored. about that I goal. May have no. <laughs> the winning goal, has uh, to yeah, be said. Yeah, yeah. no, I, it was just, <laughs> I, I missed in the first leg of the, in the semi-final, so I'm not going to gloat about a goal in a 1-0. So, although I did put the keeper on the bum and put it in the other corner, but that's, that's not for me to say. But it's worth mentioning those playoff games. We sat here at Bramall Lane. That was one of the, you know, the, the most intense atmosphere I think I can ever remember. Those two games against Nottingham Forest back in 2002 for, for and 2003. You know, I played in front of 80,000 at Wembley, scored against City. Brilliant atmospheres. Nothing compares to that night. You know, it was the best atmosphere. It was electric. Um, and the best thing was the way it ended. You know, it doesn't get better than Pesky with his top off. We spoke about the history between the two clubs, so let's go back into the archives. May 1993, the last time the two teams played against each other in the Premier League, it was a match where we said goodbye to Brian Clough, while Sheffield United all but secured their Premier League survival. Full of emotion here, because this week... Brian Clough did announce that this will be his last season here, which means that this is his last home match in charge. Sheffield United in a chain strip of white shirts and black shorts. Here's Ian Work. Roy Keane. Getting in again. But Brian Dean physically perhaps more gifted than both of the Forest forwards. And it was a cross there that was headed back by Whitehouse. Great runner from midfield. And is certainly one of Forest's stronger cards in this situation. Clough. And it came off Gale's boot for Keane. And still keen. Rogers, good early ball for Hodges. And still Hodges, it's opened up for him, and that is a top class finish from a side down at the bottom of the table. But Sheffield United celebrate a glorious Glyn Hodges goal. Oh, Gale, a free header and a goal for Sheffield United. That might be the final nail in the Forest coffin. The signs have been there from the set pieces. And a variation here. Bradshaw to Hartfield. And a deadly cross. A direct downward header. That's a final shot. A departing shot. That's the one game to come for Forest next week at Ipswich. But Brian Clough's final home fixture as manager of Nottingham Forest ends with the club that he has controlled and indeed cherished for more than 18 years being relegated. A desperately sad chapter at the end of a compelling story. The Forest's failure to take their chances today, particularly the one early in the second half. Roy Keane with the header following his manager in there. That might have made a great deal of difference, but it's typical of 
this season for them that it got away. Glyn Hodges much more ruthless with a great goal in the first half. And Brian Gale making sure of the points with the header 17 minutes from the end. Now ahead of Friday's game, Ollie Norwood and George Baldock faced the media and amongst many topics they discussed the possibility of equaling a Sheffield United record. First of all, uh, Ollie, <coughs> a landmark possibly approaching. Uh, are you aware of the fact that you could, uh, you could break the Premier League appearances record for Sheffield United? Do you bother about stats like that? Yeah, it's obviously a nice thing. Um, I had to tell the, the uh, club the, <laughs> they were trying to take one off me, so... I uh, I knew obviously I thought the record was about seventy five ish to be fair so I knew I'd played seventy I always like to see how many games I played just one of these things that you you know you look at and obviously being so close now hopefully we can you know play play plenty more of uh, in the Premier League. Which game were they trying to take off you? I'm not sure but they were telling me I was one behind George he was on seventy and apparently I was on sixty nine which was no, wrong. I'm I'm not sure they were counting subs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking. Sub appearances do count, though, yeah, don't they? Of course they do. <laughs> yeah, so a bit of competition between you two. Yeah, um, and if he overtakes me, I'm just going to say it starts that counts. <laughs> so, but no, it's, it's, it's great. Obviously, you've been here a long time together. Um, had that really successful season together. Oli played a massive part, and, and a lot of the things that I did well that season were, you know, partly down to him with his long raking balls and things like that. So it's been nice to, to, to get on the journey together and, like he, like he said, just hopefully get many more now. Can you believe it's 70? No, to be fair, um, it's gone quick. I mean, this is my sixth season here now. Um, the five years have been, you know, we had the one with COVID the, the last time we were in the Prem, which, you know, we're always reminded about, which was, which was difficult, but... You know, we, we bounced back and, as George said again, the, the group that we had um, the first year we did it was was unbelievable. The first year in the Premier League, you know, told we'd be relegated before a ball was kicked to finish ninth was, was unbelievable. And like you say, hopefully there's, there's plenty more to come, plenty more good memories. But, you know, the, the group we've got and the lads who've been here a long time now, we, you know, we've, we've been on that journey together and that real togetherness and always wanting the best for each other and always always pushing each other to to go and achieve more things and, and go and break more records. The first Premier League game would have been on the South Coast. Was that on, against Bournemouth that day, that sunny day? Yeah, obviously very fond memories of that. Um, it wasn't just us getting written off at the time. Billy Sharp as well took some stick <laughs> in the off-season before that. So for him to come on and, and score that, that vital equaliser got, got us off to a great start. Talking of vital equalisers, your first Premier League goal was against Spurs, wasn't it, that ended up playing? Yeah, it's a fantastic cross. That just it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it was, um, yeah, uh, fond memories. It was. I had all my family there. Um, uh, you know, it was, it's not too far from home, so they all made the trip. And um, yeah, it was. A, it was a fantastic team goal. Um, I think it was like twenty six passes or something like that. Yeah, was it, it got to me, and I just absolutely spooned sure. one in the box, and yeah. luckily it went in. Was across, wasn't it? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, but we scored one just before it, didn't we? It was one of the offside by his uh, toe he's or something so, yeah. at VAR. But we played really well. I, that was one of the, my favourite games, I thought. You know, at the Tottenham Stadium, it's probably one of the best stadiums in the world. And, you know, when George scored, I thought, oh, if we're going to go on and win this, we were we played really well that day. And it was great to see him get his... Uh, was that one in every division then? One in every division, yeah. So, yeah, that's yeah. not a bad record either. So He's got them all. <laughs> Including Iceland. Just like <laughs> now it's time to hear from the boss, Paul Heckingbottom, as he looks ahead to the clash with Steve Cooper's Forest. Tom Davis, how long has this been a, an option for you, or he been an option for you? Yes, uh, first spoke with Tom, uh, yeah, long time ago, long time ago. Uh, yeah, so he's, he's always been there, he's, he's, he's sort of been hanging on, wanting us to, uh, wanted to come and play for us, which has been good. Yeah, but as I said, we've obviously, we've, we've, we've had our issues, we've, we've but he's been patient enough to wait, and this weekend, like I said, we, we could push the button on a couple, and yeah, we're glad to get that done. How much do you find a player <clears throat> keen to get his career back on track? Because I realise this happens quite a bit, but as a very young player, he was the highest of highs, and it's sort of dipped since then. Mm. Yeah, I think, uh, and that tends to happen a lot of young players who have been come through at a club. It's no matter what happens, we try not to have that. Uh, mindset here, but certainly, especially if a, if a club's turning over managers or there's lots of different managers, 
homegrown players or younger players in that squad can always they always seem to be treating a certain way and and I don't know I've not been in and around Everton and I've not spoke to Tom about this, this is just my impression but you can almost be the one that gets sacrificed you can almost be the one that's always thought of as beneath and then that begins to affect lots of things um, so Tom was keen for a fresh start regardless of the opportunity to stay at Everton he was keen for a fresh start and um, yeah after we spoke he's been there has been other options but he's been holding on for uh, in the hope that we could get something done and we've been able to do that so yeah we know we've got a hungry player uh, from our point of view, we've got a player who's played all his minutes in the Premier League which is a bonus for us so you know uh, no occasion no venue no team is going to phase him because that's the only thing he knows um, but from our point of view he's, he's really hungry to uh, experience something new to learn a different way of playing um, yeah, and he's, uh, he's been really excited about it. Yeah. Final word then to you, Carl. How much are you looking forward to this game on Friday night? Yeah, of course. Um, it'll be another evolution now. We're going to see the team develop again towards Hecky's ideal um, starting 11 from the squad he has. Uh, players will have bedded in a little more. Their people have upped their fitness and relaxed from their, their movements and their transfers. I'm excited to see, of course, the boys are going to be stepping up. It's a tough match um, under the lights on a Friday night. It should be a brilliant atmosphere. And I just I hope we're going to take a lot more shots. We're going to be positive and really take the fight to them. Thanks for joining us, Carl. And thanks for tuning in, Blades fans. We'll see you next week as we look ahead to the game against Manchester City. Mm -hmm.